Welcome. We are going to discuss about the Demoivers theorem, uh, which is a result or a generalization of the application of the Euler's relation. And the Demoivers theorem will help us to solve problems involving powers of complex numbers. So let's get started. So recall that the Euler's relation is e raised power theta i is the same as cos theta plus i sine theta. And then a complex number Z given by X plus Y I in exponential form is given by Z equals to R E raised power theta I where R is the square root of X squared plus y squared, and theta is the argument of the number z. So then, if I say z power 2, I'll have r e raised power theta i, i raised to power 2, which will mean r e raised power theta i times r e raised power theta i. So when I multiply this, I get r squared e raised power 2 theta i, just applying the loss of indices. And you know, when you have z equals to r e raised power theta i, uh, remember that it is the same thing as saying r into cos theta plus i sine theta. So therefore, this one means that z squared is the same as r squared into cos 2 theta plus i sine 2 theta. Let's also square, uh, cube the complex number z. So z cubed will be r e raised power 3 theta i power 3, which means you multiply this by itself three times. So we'll have r power 3 e raised power 3 theta i, just applying loss of indices. So this will be the same as r cubed cosine of 3 theta plus i sine 3 theta. So that is the value of z power 3. So similarly, z power 4 will be r e raised power theta i power 4 which is r power 4, e raised power 4 theta i. So this also implies that um, z power 4 is the same as r power 4 
into cosine of four theta plus i sine four theta. And repeatedly doing the same, we end up with z power n will be r power n into cosine of four uh, into cosine of n theta plus i sine n theta. So this general result is what we call the, the Moivas theorem. So this generalization is called the De Moivas theorem. And this result is very useful, especially when you are raising a complex number to some powers or you are finding the square roots of complex numbers. So so we can say so for a complex number, z equals to x plus yi, which can be written as r into cos theta plus i sine theta. z power m is given by r power m into cosine of n theta plus i sine n theta. And this n can be any real number. And r is always the square root of x squared plus y squared. And theta is always the argument of z. So this is a statement of the, the Moivas theorem. Then uh, the de Moivas theorem can be used to compute n roots of complex numbers. And then uh, just as a recap, I recall that An nth root of the complex number z is another complex number w such that z uh, w itself is given by w power n is what gives z. 
So this is what you say that. W is the nth root of complex number z. Now we can write both W and Z in trigonometric. Forms. I or simply we can write these two complex numbers in polar form. So let W be given by S into cos pi plus I sine pi, and let Z be given by R into cos theta plus I sine theta. So let's have those two forms of the two complex numbers, W and Z. So using the De Moivre's theorem, On W, because remember W is raised to power n, we have W power n will be S into cos phi plus I sine phi. So this number is raised to power n. So which will give us S power n and then cos n phi plus i sine n phi. And since w power n equals to z, uh, equal to z then we have that s power n into cos n phi plus i sine n phi will be given by z, which is given by r into cos theta plus i sine theta. So that result should be true. And so for these two sides to be the same, S power N must be R, which implies that S alone is the same as R raised power one over N. And then also the real parts on the left should be the same as real part on the right. So cos N pi must also be the same as cos theta and sine n phi must be same as sine of theta. But it's a very basic rule or basic property of both sine and cosine function. Uh, but since cosine and sine functions are periodic, with period 2 pi, then we know that cos theta is the same as cos theta plus two pi k and sine theta can also be written as sine of theta plus two pi k where k 
is an integer. These are results that we know that these two functions are true. But you will be at the same point when you move through 360 degrees and the multiples of the 360 degrees to L1. So uh, we can have, so this uh, tells us that cos N5 can be written as cos theta plus 2 pi k because cos theta is the same as cos theta plus 2 pi k and sine n phi is the same as sine of theta plus 2 pi k. And so this means that n phi is the same as theta plus 2 pi k from the two equations, which means that um, phi alone is theta plus 2 pi k divided by n. So this is what we have. So phi can be expressed in terms of theta using this relationship. So thus, W is the same as S, which is cos phi plus I sine phi becomes Remember from this result that um, S is the same as R power one over M, we'll have W is R power one over M into cosine of theta plus two pi k over n plus i sine theta plus two pi k over n. So this is how we write the nth root of complex number z. So since this expression gives a different value of w for k equals to 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to n minus 1, we have so you can put it in the form of a theorem that the roots uh, roots of a complex number z equals to r into cos theta plus i sin theta. I mean that you need to write the complex number z in polar form. r w sub k r power one over n into cos theta plus two k pi over n plus i sine theta plus two pi k or k pi 
power n that side to be consistent. Uh, where k runs from 0, 1, 2, 3, up to n minus 1. So these are uh, this is an expression that helps us to find the roots of a complex number. So in the next session, we'll be now applying the Demoeva theorem on how to find powers of complex numbers and also how to find the roots of complex numbers. So let's meet in the next session.